everyone, welcome to Types TV. Uh, two guests on today, uh, Dan and Charlie. Uh, appreciate you joining me. We're going to have a after match sport on the Exeter game. Uh, before we get to that, though, I just want to, you know, there's also what's been going about, you know, some memes about, about the bounds of coach, but thankfully it's coming out that no, you know, we all got off at coach, uh, which is the main thing, you know, everybody, you know, no injuries or like that. And I believe that another coach firm stepped in and got the team and squad home. So, again, unfortunate that it's happened, but no, nobody's been injured. Or, uh, so that's the main thing. Uh, I don't know if you want to add out to it, Dan, Charlie, or out before we go on. No. Uh, no, I'll, go on, Charlie. All right, you go first, mate. Yeah, no, all, I mean, I've heard it. I, I don't know if it's true. I've heard that it was Cheltenham team coach that brought us back. Um, if it is, uh -huh. you know. Credit that that were all over Twitter yesterday. If it is credit to him, you know what I mean. Um, huh? It's fair play. Um, I mean, if everybody is all well and good, you know, no problems. For me, it's happened. We've got international break next weekend as well, so it kind of it might have as much as lads seem like they're joking about it, it. You know, it will have a bit of a reality check to them and a bit like huh? shit. Look at what's just happened. Um, but you know, as long as everybody's safe, everybody's well, um, that's that's all that matters. Um, but you know, it's not just as players that are on fire, so let, let's keep going. Let's keep going, <laughs> Dan. <laughs> I've, robbed, I've robbed my joke. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, listen, everybody's everybody's sound and well, and that's what matters. And and you know, we've uh, it's a uh, it's uh, unexpected uh turner events no one no one quite expected that one but uh but yeah as long as everybody's safe and 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 stuff and that that's what matters and i think you know i don't know what happened but i can imagine it's quite a scary experience so i hope that uh, players get a bit of support and stuff like that if the, if it's needed um but uh gone into Barry Cotter's Snapchat um story <laughs> i don't think you were very traumatized about the incident i thought i found it very funny which uh <laughs> Which, to be honest, once I found out everybody was safe, I did a little bit yeah. as well, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, Jolly Boy's out, you know, the fools and artists, anybody who <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Who's uh, ever watched that episode? Uh, it would have been <laughs> like that. But, but yeah, as long as everybody's safe and sound, that's what matters. Yeah, we know our Wednesday fans feel, don't we, with their season going up in smoke. Luckily, oh, it's not yeah. our season, it's just our coach. Just our coach. <laughs> I know, uh, credit with credit to Joey, A up and down as well. Uh, they were straight on it, uh, with coach, we oh, jolly boys out him, but he also put one out saying, you know, it's great to see, you know, joking and laughing, it's all safe. And I think fair play and all to the club for the change, you actually put a statement out pretty quick on thing, which I thought I was surprised and more shocked about. Uh, so I think that well, that one he did as well. Uh, obviously, we you know, with, with players and that, but. Like I said, uh, we move on. It's only coach, players, and everybody else. Whether it's going to like ever and affect we, you know, traumatized because it, it must be a bit of out of experience joking inside. So I'll be more we can move on from that. Uh, so yeah, just getting to the game. Then I mean, Charlie, uh, same start to eleven. I think me and Ryan touched on it on a previous game. I don't think you could really not say uh, start the same eleven from Cambridge game, could you? No, um, uh, you know what? It's it's one of them. I mean, I was looking at it yesterday, um, just highlighting a couple of individual players. Uh, you know, Russell didn't have the best start to season or whatever, but yesterday kind of seemed like he went under radar. I didn't even realise that. I thought he'd come off at some point, but he went mm. under radar, but he was doing all the things right. Um, you know, Cole, everybody's going, oh, well, he's not scoring in two, he's not scoring in three, but everybody else is scoring. So, you know, as long as them goals are going in, you can't change side. Um, I think a, a couple of people were a bit unsure whether Shepard had come in and is it, I can never say his name, DJ, the Givney, yeah. whatever his name yeah. is. Is he going to go out? But I'll be honest with you. I think he was solid yesterday. He probably won at man at matches for me. Mm. So it just goes to show they might not have the best start, but if we get behind these lads, there's potential in them. And, you know, credit where credit's due um, to Collins. Went with same 11, 
you know, I'd, I'd faith in them all. Stuck with Watters as well, which some people were a bit unsure about. Mm. And he seemed yesterday like he was, I wouldn't say he was the be all and end all because he's far from that. But he was putting his centre back a bit more, and you know, so you can't change your winning side if it's not Brock, don't fix it. Yeah, mm. Dan, just going on from that, I mean, just I, I get where your child was coming from and all because if I'm being honest, I'm not one of Russell's biggest fans, but it is a bit like my might. He does a job, goes a bit unnoticed, but sometimes you think, mm, don't really take to him. What is again, same. Uh, to be fair, I, I will raised eyebrows at Cambridge game. I thought he might have started McAtee or he might have started uh, Cosgrove up front with Cole, but he didn't. He went with Watters, so and it paid off. You know, Gaffer's seen so much in training. So again, just going back to that, what were you expecting a change from Cambridge game? Or are you a bit like you know rest saying no? You know, he won't find out away. It's one of the off air, winning away from home. It, it, it's not a badly thing a couple of years ago, is it? You know, it, it can of be, if we, come, if we come away with a while, it's a bit more of a surprise than all else, isn't it? I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, in all honesty, I didn't expect any changes because because you've just won 4 nil, you know, and you've got to, and when you've, you're probably playing a team like Exeter and this is absolutely, when I say like Exeter, I don't mean it in a derogatory way whatsoever. I have had a lot of, appreciation for Exeter and I think they played incredibly well and they do play some good football as well so um but because they are good and because they know because we know that you can they can take you apart I suppose going into that you have to go into that game with a team that's just won and have got a bit of confidence about them so I didn't expect any massive changes um but, you know, obviously going into, as, as game went on, you know, I think a few things weren't, I think we defended really well all game, if I'm honest. I know they hit post. I know they came in off that left, off that, uh, from that winger on, I think it's on right-hand side. Hmm. And he puts, and he, or obviously he hit post as well from that shot from distance. But apart from that, I think we defended absolutely, we defended brilliantly. I think Exeter were trying to have a go at us and we were just meeting every single thing that we're putting into the box. Mm. Um, so we're really impressed about that. But more the game went on, more we, need, more we had some belief and said, right, we're going to take a risk here and put some attacking players on. And it worked uh, as well. Yeah. It changed game. It changed game. There's no two ways about it. And I, I, that one thing that I'm most happy about, because of the fact that we've got, got confidence to accept that we've got a set of lads on bench, that we've got confidence on saying, we're going to put you on and you're going to change a game. That's vital if you're aiming for where we want to be. It's it's imperative, I would argue. I'm sorry, Charlie, I interrupted Joe. No, no, I was just saying it worked as well with these... With players coming off at bench, you know, you look, start at season, bench were a bit weak, in my opinion. You look at it now, we've got Phillips, Cosgrove, McAtee, Barry Cotter. You bring them four players on, guaranteed they're going to make a change. And that's, you know, you're still leaving out the likes of Owen Dodgson there as well, who can come on yeah. and do a, a, who can do a bit, you know. For me, it's a weird, and I don't want to say it's only... Like better things to come, but we've got Connell to come back from injury as well. Or, well, illness, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Which, you know, that's going to take a bit of time. Connor McCarthy's coming back, um, which is a good thing. Then you've got your likes of your players that, not that you've forgot about, but that's kind of been put to back, like Matty Wolf, Robbie Cundy, you mm -hmm. know. They're players that can still come back. Are they going to make an impact? Who knows? But it's going to strengthen the squad for maybe the cup games that we've got as well. Yeah, fair point. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just uh, before we get about Luke Connell, I mean, we were just talking off air uh, um, about the changes being made and going back to what, I mean, we all kind of agree because summer, a lot of players were coming in and relatively unknown. So we're not being disrespectful. It's like, you know, we, we look at the players lost and the players coming in. Now you kind of see the potential, what's the like to give me Shepherd because I thought um, he was starting to come good. Players were fitting in pretty decent and starting to like make a difference. Unfortunately for Casper Wapita, who picked up injury, looks like he's going to be out for a couple of months. So, again, you, you the, the, the lads what are coming in are wanting to play football, and that's what I want. I don't want players unhappy at club and think I want to be elsewhere. Um. And again, extra 
going back to what Dan was saying, I mean, you look last season, we double up us, you know, but we know yeah. Monks, but we do play some decent football. Probably, and I've seen some comments as well in chat saying that probably X is on fault but we're trying to play too much at football, which fell into our hands. And I think yeah, the neutral were trying to watch that game yesterday, but probably enjoying this because at times it seemed to be one into other, one into other, no real pattern. And as I think second half when Tom substitutes I think were spot on like like you both said uh mm. Charlie and Dan is that I think we made it right time and we did come on and make an impact. I mean how many teams would love a Cosgrove to come off the bench or a McAtee and, and actually make a difference and it and it did it it, it came to seem to push us on and I think from then on it was just a matter of time when we were gonna uh square. I know you know I don't know what you are just going before we get on about Luke Connell what we are to come over came we've had a cross or a a shot when he oh, like, that, that, that were a cross a million <laughs> I'm like, percent. What my and, that? <laughs> you know what I, <coughs> and it, it's hard for me to say this but i've been calling for Herbie kane to be dropped for a for a bit uh, a bit of time not i don't want to say that he's doing out wrong but then there's games where he's quiet and he's not doing out so uh, you look at nicky cadden if cadden can be dropped and if barry cotter can be dropped and i don't know um, McAtee can be dropped, yet he's a lone Phillips player. Phillips have been dropped. Phillips can be dropped. Yeah. Why can't Herbie Kane be dropped? He, no. He's, he's no better, and I get it, don't get me wrong, he can be an influential player, but maybe it might give him a bit of a kick up backside, as if no. to think, well, it, I can actually get dropped. Is he getting a bit too comfortable? I don't know, and I don't want to go in and say, you no. know, start ripping player to bits, because we've won five away games on bounce. But it seems to be at home. He seems to be a completely different player. Yeah. And it's, confidence. it's just, it, yeah, it could be confidence. It could be that. But then you look at it. If if it's the same when we come back to a, well, at end of month and we carry on with these wins, is it a different style that Collins is asking him to play in these home mm. games? Which you, you can't see it, but could it be? Could it be just slightly different? Mm. Um, mm. For me, I think the best way we can go forward this year is attack teams and press front front foot because we all know as defence can be a bit shaky at times. That's the weak part of our squad as defence. Oh. We, we all know that. So if we attack teams and we push and try and relieve a lot or release a lot of stress and whatever from them defenders, that could be yeah. our way forward at home. If we can do it away, we can do it at home. You know, there's no there's no reason to not. Yeah, Dan, you agree with that? What? Push no, it completely front. agree. Uh, yeah, yeah, completely agree. Press from press from front. It's it's the way that it, that's where we got so many points last season. You know, you're picking up you're picking up on team mistakes, um, and you're allowing those teams to make the mistakes, but you're pushing them into doing that. I mean, against Northampton, that first goal was crucial. Now it was a great finish by Styles. I'm not going to give uh, it was a great finish by Styles. Not taking all away from him. Huh. But the issue was is that he's put, the issue was is that because we've put him under pressure, he's made bad pass at goalkeeper. Goalkeepers try to get it out, and Styles chips it over his head. Yeah, you can look at it and say, well, that's a mistake from Northampton. Well, yeah, but you're pushing them to make that mistake, and you're putting them under pressure. And obviously, when we scored that goal against Northampton, we didn't play that well that game. His attacking threat wasn't wasn't there. It's that sort of, I hate, I hate this saying, but it's goals change game sort of thing. You know, we got that first goal and then we tried and then we went on to, we went on to beat, we went on to beat them. Um, so, so yeah, pressing front front. And I think as well, I, it's like you just said, Neil, I think the thing is when they get on to Hopewell, they know that they've got a bad, they know that they're not happy with their own record. And I think sometimes it's confidence, you know, fans getting on the back of it. You know, uh, and I suppose that if you know that fans are going to get on your back and you go one nil down, you, you you kind of think, oh God! Instead of thinking, you know, we're away from home, they're on, you know, and they can play a little bit more freely. That's not a dig against fans. Fans have got to no. say what they can say. It's just, but these are just the, the factors that you've got to consider. Um. So yeah, I, I can. I mean, I can see all form improving. I, I, it's just getting. I think you've got to have a look as well at what teams we've played at home. Um, 
they've not been easy teams. Now, that's not excusing the way that we've performed at home at all, because we should have performed better. There's no two, but they are they have been more difficult teams away. And we in second half, in second half, we in um in a way we've played teams on the bottom, mostly on the bottom half of the division. But we the only one we played that were on top half has been Exeter, and that were obviously yesterday. So so yeah, I mean it's uh, it, I can see it improving, and I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of things there's a lot of things. As for Irby Kane as well, what Charlie's point? Listen, you, you need to you need to all players uh, all players if they're performing badly should be dropped, and oh. that that that's the reality. Of it. You're in a promotion scrap, and there's nobody who's entitled to a place inside. I think we Irby, Irby's interesting because he because there's bits of him where there's brilliance and you can see it. You can see when he drives forward. Sometimes you can see where he's he's trying to make stuff happen. And then there's like the cane that gets ball and there's a bit of loose passing. There's not there's not there's like, no in you between know, with him. No, no, and they're in. But I think I think it is down to confidence. And I think sometimes we, I would imagine that some managers probably think, well, he ain't got confidence. So what do I do? Do I drop him? And do I do I drop him and tell him, you know, we can't risk you, therefore affect his confidence more or, or bring him down his confidence more? Or do I play him and if he makes a mistake, I'm going to tell him he's made a mistake and I'm going to tell him to rectify it, but I'm still going to play him. It's that, it, it, you're between a rock and an hard place, we, I think. But, yeah, um, interesting. I don't I don't know, but in my opinion, listen, no no, no player bigger than club, and sometimes you've got to make sacrifices. I can't see him getting dropped now because we're winning and him being quite in a quite key position, you know, key area of the pitch in regards to his position. But we'll we'll see. We'll see. Still a long way to go yet this season. Still a long way to go. I mean, just getting back, I mean, some decent points maybe about Herbie Kane and style of play and front foot and stuff like that. I mean, what I've seen of us playing away, we seem to be playing like we did last season. We were on front foot, protecting mm. to him. When we're at home, I don't know what, and we'll come back to this, I don't know what your guys think about it. People, you know, watching, let us know in the comment. But when we play at home, I think we play too much of possession base. We don't seem to set off as quick when we're at home. It seems to be that ideal against Port, uh, Portsmouth. In, in first day, we were happy and content to sit and watch and soak it up and not really chase it and take it down. Now, when you look at such as, the, like you said, the Northampton game, right from, right from off, we were chasing it down and leading to mistakes. We weren't doing that against Portsmouth. So when we're at home, I don't know if it's a if it's Collins way of style where he thinks we're at home, we can be a bit more reserved, you don't have to go as quick and as, as 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 aggressive. But I think you should be. And it's no disrespect and like I'm not saying go all gun ho, but I, I look for the first 15, 20 minutes, we should be on front foot taking gain to them. But after your 20 mm -hmm. minute spell, spell, you're always gonna get them gonna come back and we get that. You can't do it for full 90, it's impossible. But when we're at home, and I think that's where Kane plays a slightly different role, because it always seems to be a sideways or a backwards pass. It doesn't seem to be as that. It, it seems to be a different player away than it does at home. Whether it's because he's at home and he's thinking, if I make a mistake here, I've got a lot of fans on my back, I don't know. But it doesn't seem to be as, I want to say committed, that's committed, committed is the wrong word, but he doesn't seem to be as confident in his own belief. Like I say, a simple pass or, you know, just a, a forward-looking ball. It always it seems to go... Sideways, backwards, and I think that is a completely different style of what we're playing away from home. I don't know what you all think about. I think it seems like as as home form and as away form have swapped round this year. Mm. It's now would you take that? And it, it sounds daft. Would you take us having a brilliant away record mm. and as home form not being the best? Because in my opinion, I get it. You know, we're at home, we want to win. We want it to be, as they said, the fortress as such. But 
it's only the same, is it not? If 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 we've got a good home form and as away form's not the best, there's no difference in it. You're still picking up three points. Huh. You're still, you know, so... And I get it. That people said there is a difference in it because you're at home, you know, you want people to fear coming to you. But maybe it might, you know, it, this season could be a people fear us gonna them type of thing. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, if you win or if your own form's good or your away form's good, and vice versa, it don't really matter. You're still getting three points on board, hopefully, at the end of the game. And it, it's just one of them. I, if we could improve his own form and as away form stayed as it were, we you know, would be up there. There's no saying we can't go for top two, but oh. currently, I think with his own form being as shaky and as inconsistent as it is because let's be honest it is we're, we're not we're, we're not giving ourselves the best chance currently to fight for that top two mm. and it, it, it's just one of them innit I mean for me I'd be happy with every game this season being boring as chuff and getting three points at Hendrick getting a last minute goal I think we all would or mm. getting a first minute goal mm. and has been under cosh for 90 minutes as long as we get them three points for me, it doesn't matter how we do it. Yes, we Wait, want to see good football. We want to see nice football. But, you know, it's just it's just one of them. It's all about the overall points for me that you get to end at season. And at minute, we're not giving ourselves the best chance at raking in as many points as we possibly can. Which, which to be fair, Charlie, up till 65 minutes, I, I, only, I nearly sleep yesterday. They were, they were boring. Mm. I, really, really dull. Um, but yeah, you, 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 have got, you've got a point, you know, you, 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 um, but yeah, I mean, we all in a way, it, it's, there's this one word for it. You've got to be consistent across balls and, you know, I'm not that plowing on expectation of, you know, there's, I'm not plowing on expectation, but this has come from own this has come from the horse's mouth, i.e. the owners who's, who's backing this, who's putting their own money into this. They said they want to be back at Championship, by hook or by crow. Mm. So the first thing we need to be aiming for is top two. And if we don't get top two, we need to be aiming for playoffs. And that's... And if you want to look at every side that's gone up, they've shown consistencies across both fixtures uh, when they're playing both home and away. So it's something we're going to have to look into. Um, and it's something that's going to have to get better. I mean, you, I mean, when you're going against those sides, so if you're going side against sides at top six, for example, or top eight, um, if you're winning your games that you're meant to do at home and you've got to play them away and you're getting a point, it's not the worst thing in the world. But the problem is, is that when teams are coming up to Oakwell, they're absolutely bulldozing us. Um you know, Peterborough, Portsmouth, Blackpool, they're all, you know, these are sides that have all been equipped and they're all equipped in, in different ways. So Portsmouth, you know, Portsmouth are a good league one side, Blackpool's just come down from championship, Peterborough are always going to be trying trying to compete uh, to get into playoffs or top two, you know, and they're, and they're beating us. And then all of this, obviously Oxford, they were just flying at home. And, um, and, you know, that's not, it, it's saying that you can look at it and say, yeah, it's at home. But I think as well, what you've got to say is that, you know, these these look like they're going to be our competitors this season and the, and the beating us, which is a little bit worrying. But I think, Neil, I think, like I said, you've got, we have got time to bring this around. You know, it's, it's 8th of October. I said to you, Neil, at the start of the season, I said to everybody, I says, wait until November, December, see where we are, see why we need to improve, maybe January transfer window, and 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 you know, and then we'll probably be able to have a good idea of where we're gonna end up or what we need. Um, and I'm sticking by it, but at the moment I'm looking at it with fourth in table. Is it fourth? Or do we drop third, down a fifth? Third. Third, third in table. Got I think it's seven wins. Pretty deep, a very good amount of wins. Okay, we lost four, not great. Could be better. But, you know, at the moment we're doing all right. And it's still, there's still a lot of time left this season to bring this around. I mean, we, last season, for example, I don't think we, what were we, eighth? 
9th in January. Yeah, before we like really kicked on and yeah. <coughs> Bobby Thomas yeah. came Bobby Bob Thomas came in, Harry Eister came in, different team. We were a completely different team. We were winning every game, we would absolutely bulldoze in every side that we inside. I think we lost to I think the only ones we lost were Exeter, weren't it? Well, one of the only teams we lost to were Exeter mm. and Ipswich. Mm. It this is the, it has got time to improve. Um do I believe that we we are going to do that? Well, I'm looking at players and I'm thinking, well, you're showing good, you're showing a good spirit about you. You're showing you've you've obviously they're obviously young lads who've got a lot of potential. It's about whether we're gonna whether we're gonna be able to unlock that this season and and get the best out of them. At the moment, I think there's still improvements to be made, but we're going in a fairly good direction. So yeah, let's just uh, wait and see. Yeah, I mean, well, there'll be a lot more other clubs out there in League One thinking, you know, they'll give a back teeth to be where we are. I mean, you look at Dark yeah. County, and I think it'd have been an interesting game as well. I, I was looking forward to international deck as like put Kai Bosch went back Bolton. I think might have been a good test for us Tom as well. We Ian yeah. Uh but again, you know, we're in league, we're healthy. We're still room for improvement. I think I think League One's very for checking. I think Portsmouth are going to be very the bats. Portsmouth are going to remind me of something like uh, a Plymouth or uh, an Ipswich from last season. Um, mm. I think Oxford, for some unknown reason, run a right roll at the minute. Uh, could they fall to could they feed? Possibly. I think if we did this, what we had to do and put pressure on them, test for nerves kind of thing, you might see that. So I think it's very for checking. You see, you see the results what's happening in League One. And people are like beating other people and draws. And I'm like, if someone can get a run together, I mean, if we had it at our point tally, this, uh, you know, last season at this, it would probably win league. You know what I mean? I think it's yeah. fair for checking. I think it's fair for yeah. checking. Uh, yeah, but in October, uh, position where we are, great. Is there room for improvement? Yeah. Uh, but uh, January is going to come up. All being well, come like you said, November, December, we're still in alpha position. Collins can identify where we need to tweak it, what we're missing, just for that little bit. Like I said, we've got Eichstead in and we've got Bobby Thomas in last season. They they like give that kick on for us. I think possibly the same could happen again. What position that might be? Would it be someone in midfield? I don't know. Luke Connell, is he going to come back same play when he just come back after his illness? Who knows? Might be somewhere to be where it needs to beef it up and just like you know knuckle down and i mean going on about luke o'connell uh great to see you know pictures come out saying you know he's in training gear he's on pitch again i'll open it up into charlie and uh, dan this i mean can you see him back first team action before christmas i won't risk it um you know as much as we want him back <coughs> and as much or, like, he is an influential player, we know that. Mm -hmm. Now, with him having the amount of time off due to the illness that he's had, do we want to risk him and think, right, we'll chuck you straight in first team when we know you're fit, or we'll get you on off at bench for two games, then you're back into it. Do we do that? And potentially, mm -hmm. you know, his illness could get a bit worse. Or do we introduce him back into it like we've done with Conor McCarthy get him maybe playing for under 21s a little bit mm. get his fitness back up to full speed mm. and then slowly bring him in now again we all want him there you know we all want him to be back but yeah. it, it, it's that risk reward is it worth taking risk too early to gain a little bit of reward or is it it's a tricky one main thing for me is back round football is back working on his fitness and stuff. And that's more positive than probably the position that we were in three weeks ago with him. So mm -hmm. for me, it's just slow and steady he'll win the race with him, right? And whenever he's back, he's back. If we need to strengthen in that area in January, if you know, if he's not back to full fitness, mm -hmm. so be it. We've he's still our player, we've still got him. Mm -hmm. And let's take his time with him because for me. He's probably the best potential product we've got at, at our club. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, echo that, echo that. Uh, Charlie. Dan, do you want to add out to that, mate? 
No, Charles is getting on Ed really. Yeah. yeah, don't rush him back. He's not. He's. He's. Listen, we've we've like we just mentioned about home form. Okay, it ain't perfect, but you know we look like over the last couple of games that we've got a little bit more comfortable playing a certain way. Yeah, we've had to make subs and we've had to we've had to change it up a little bit and get that winning goal. But we know that more that we do that, more we do that. Or more that, uh, or more that we're playing in a certain way. Players are going to get used to it, and we're going to, and hopefully that's going to create a bit of fami- uh, familiarity in the team. Jesus, that were a hard word to say. Um, familiarity. There we go. Uh, got it right. Got it right three time round. But yeah, so he's got. So that's going to come. That so we're going to get the results from that. I'm hoping we'll get results from that. So rushing back, Luca. Is going to be a bit like it's just going to. It's it's like Charles said, risk and reward. You know, Mm. you're going to get a player that's not that's potentially not fit enough to play 90 minutes of football or Mm. or 60 minutes of football, and that could either cause another injury, or it could, or equally, it could end up putting a player on there that's a bit that that's that's not can't provide the quality that he did before he were. Before he were, uh, before he got injured, so or his illness or whatever it was. Um, so yeah, I, I see him before Christmas. I mean, maybe I, I, I don't know because I'm not, you know, I'm not physio, I'm not physio, so I don't. Yeah, nice uh, Christmas present for us fans, wasn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. and his as well, wasn't it? So yeah. Um, it'd be would rope red carpet out for him. <laughs> <laughs> But that's because he what he, what he can give you as a player. I, I think Russell, yeah. like, me, me, me and you have discussed this loads of times, Neil. You know, the problem is with John Russell is we expect him to be like Luke O'Connell and he's not like Luke O'Connell at all. He's not mm. going to be like that player. Mm. But when you've got Luke O'Connell there, he'll, he'll try and drive ball through the middle. And then you will see, I'm p- quite confident that you will see midfielders like Kane, potentially Phillips if he plays, styles coming into their own because they're going to have space to run at defenders and they're going to have they're going to be creating space around the box and that's going to be the same for Devante as well so it's it is he is a game changing player hmm. but you know again he is a he's a end of days a human being and you don't want to rush him back um oh, so when he when he's ready he, he comes back and I hope yeah. I hope obviously I'll Stafford Barnes have made the right decision on that, and I trust them to. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, and it dates a person as a human being. He'll be he'll be eager to get back. He must be doing his editing as well, not being able to play football. But you know, it, it, you're hoping that Stafford and everybody around him is like trying to just put breaks and make sure that he's right to send, not just physically but mentally as well. Uh, being out for such a long period of time with illness and all his fans are out like to be able to red carpet out. And I, I can imagine he's going to get a rousing reception when it, it gets announced on PA system. So yeah, I'll be where we can see Luca back uh, soon, but not too soon. But it's going to. Uh, ever knock on effects and uh, damages, you know, potential comeback. Uh, be like a new sign and all coming back as well. Uh, so we'll get back to man at match at extra game. Um, I want to go to Gibney, Missen. I thought it looked solid, it just looks accomplished. Um, you look at other players, I mean, you know, people say McAtee for coming on and taking goal and stuff like that. Liam Roberts, usual suspects again, getting, getting mentioned. Um, but for me, to give me, I think all you know, he had a dodgy well, that's putting it politely. Uh, first debut when he penalty and all that were going off. But I think now is is he's like looking at player, but I'm thinking, yeah, you know what, he looks confident, comfortable, and confident in his own ability. And I, I think it's passing on a bit that light. And I'm thinking, yeah, you know what. It's going to be competition now for us to get in, such as Whopper to, or, you know, um, oh, I'm trying to think of other names now. Uh, McCarthy, because he's been playing in, in uh, cup games. So, again, competition, but for me, I'm going to get into Gibney. Charlie. Mm. Yeah, um, I've got to agree. Um, you know, I think 
he, he was quality yesterday. He was solid. Um, did everything right. Roberts looked a bit shaky, but it's funny watching him when he does it. You uh -huh. know, he came out to try to clear ball a couple of times. He slipped. I mean, he slipped on his ass. Yeah. Played ball against their striker. He tripped over his own feet. Yeah, yeah. And then, he, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then, but the funny thing is, he stood there helping him up and pats their striker on back as if to say, yeah. that's your chance, pal. Yeah. You? <laughs> and you look and you just think, you, it's, that's oh, game honestly, he's... <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's what for me is what you call a football shit house. Yeah, he's, he's quality. Yeah. And I love him. Um, yeah. It's yeah. It's so yeah. Uh, De Givney, um Everybody played well, but for me, you know, it's got to be him. Um, it's it's just one of them. It, it, even if they've not had the best game, if a play uh, sorry, the, if they're not in the best form, if a player shines and has a good game, you've got to give him credit they deserve. Mm -hmm. And you know. Hopefully, that's the foundations and the stepping stones that he needs to get his confidence built up. And who knows? So, yeah, like I said, De Givney. Um, I'm not going to get McAtee simply because of that chance that he missed in the last minute as well. That's probably, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's probably got a five out of five one on one <laughs> ratio that's been missed. So, you know, well done for getting goal. Fair play. It's what we needed. But he puts the hard ones away and absolutely shafts the easy ones. But who, <laughs> like I said, who cares? Three points, he Three got points. goal, so yeah. Uh, Dan, yeah, you're a man at match, <laughs> Uh Yeah, I, I was messaging you two, weren't I, after game finished, yeah. and I'm split between two, but I'm just going to have to, I'm going to pick this guy just for game of mention. I think the cart were absolutely exceptional yesterday. Mm -hmm. Great tracking back. The hit is on counter a number of times. He were always there cleaning it up. Tried to play that. Tried to play a good few precise balls forward. Very good. Just, just had that instinct, and mm. and he would. Yeah, I would just. I really liked him, and I think he played. I think he played really well against Cambridge as well. And I'm, I'm hoping that we we've got a really consistent performer at back. Um, but uh, and I, I think as well due to his level of due to his stats let's say that when we first signed him everybody were going what the hell have we got him you know he don't look he don't look that sort of player and uh he don't look like sort of player that's gonna step up and stuff and, and, and everybody was saying it i remember reading twitter page, well not reading twitter pages but reading the twitter pages got sent to me by you a lot usually because i don't yeah. do twitter as you know <laughs> um so uh but uh but yeah, I thought it was great. Uh, De Givney were brilliant as well. I've, it, it was so hard to break them two up, uh, mm. but the, yeah, both of them played really well. So yeah, it was just it was great yesterday. Fantastic, uh, and three points, three points due, and three points from being, and it's three points we've got through being really consistent in both key areas at pitch, in all key areas at pitch, which which we've got to be happy about yeah three points in bag a long journey back to south yorkshire and i think now the players are uh, understanding uh not one another but each other's game and you can see little partnerships and little bits of understanding going off with the given name of roberts uh yeah. on, like i said with roberts it must be hard for him because you just get used to like one central defender being in and then it's like it's constantly changed so it's that understanding there but yeah i get i get we hit on about roberts is that kind of player a bit of the shit house kind of player but uh, i just love him i want I, I just wish club would go out in january and say hey, you know what we want to make him his own get him from Middlesbrough. is that contract end of, end of the season just to get something done because i think he yeah he puts a lot of belief back in fans and all even when we're scoring at full time is is very you know it's like yeah proper you just want it you just love him for it um, yeah, they're all. I think they're all showing a bit of personality now, aren't they? They're all like it was like they're all a bit reserved at first. Well, Roberts weren't. Roberts has never been reserved. <laughs> Mike like looks at it, and I love him for it. I like a good mental goalkeeper. Um, <laughs> no, don't. But uh, I think all of them are starting to show a bit of personality now. Like every, they're a bit reserved at first, but now they're all like coming out of the shell a little bit. And at full time, you could tell there's like a few jokes being made between them, and mm -hmm. you know, oh, you've got. One running up to the fans, like lifting their arms up in air. Roberts is doing it. Collins is like Collins is getting in there, and I think every, I think it's just a, 
good feeling, a good feeling about, you know, that yeah. confidence inside again. And yeah, that's that's nice to see. It's good day. Yeah. You don't I get think, many. And it's good day. <laughs> yeah, it's like when you see players like that, it's confidence and even when a coach run fire. And like what Charles said earlier, Barry Cotter is like making jokes out of me. So, <laughs> yeah. and you know, someone's like, when someone's like about a player making jokes out of me, the coach being on fire, it's like, yeah, camaraderie is in camps all right, isn't it, really? So, mm. yeah, uh, <laughs> we've got an international break coming up, uh, but we've got three points in bag. Uh, Dan and Charlie, appreciate taking your time out and uh, having an after match thoughts about the game. Uh, always great debate and good laughs and all that. So, appreciate that. Uh, as weekend's a bit better. Um, start looking for a new coach in our club, a new new coach. So at least we've got an international break, so we're not after rushing to making any dodgy decisions and gain an old thirteen player edge or something like that. So we, we can we can go a bit up market or be well and get insurance. Yeah. Are they going to use? Are they going to use data model to buy this coach? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> an announcement's yeah. imminent. <laughs> Just they're going to buy a rate old cap, crappy coach, and but when three years comes to end its contract, it's going to have like big rims <laughs> on it, and it's going to be like, we're going to flog it to Burnley for six million. <laughs> that's it. Don't moan when we don't sign anybody in January, though, because that's where his transfer budget's oh, gone. It's, gone, on, it, 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 it's gone on this eighteen-year-old coach that's absolutely shagged. <laughs> are, are we going to get one on loan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're gonna get one on loads later this season. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh <laughs> it's that we'll leave it as it is. Uh but yeah, have a great week and thanks for joining me. Leave like, subscribe, and share and let your uh, comments below. Uh as always, one thing I'll have to say, you guys.